Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Sugar MD. Today we are going to talk about types of diabetes. Now, what type do you have? You may know or you think you may know, but half the time people are wrong. Unless you are very typical type 2, you know, let's say you are 55 year old, very overweight, and then you are just taking some pills and, you know, you're doing fairly okay. Yeah, that's probably type 2. Yeah, that's pretty typical, right? But there are a lot of people are in is not in that category. So, guys, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist practicing in Florida and New York, and I'm a diabetes educator. So, today we are talking about types of diabetes. Let's get started. Guys, so... Like I said, if you may think you're a typical diabetic, you may consider yourself type 2 or type 1, and there are a lot of misconceptions around it. So when somebody comes to me, I don't label them like insulin dependent or non-insulin dependent or type 1 or type 2. I ask them, hey, what do you think you have? And they'll tell me. If they tell me that, you know, they have diabetes since age 2, I'm not going to tell them, no, you have type 2 or I'm going to investigate. No, you know, that's typical if you have diabetes at a super young age, that is type 1. If they tell me that, hey, you know, doc, I was diagnosed when I was 15 and I'm 35 right now. And I'm like, hey, have you been insulin all your life? Uh, since, I mean, when I say all your life, since you got diagnosed. If they say no, I know that they were not a typical type 1 because if you're type 1, you cannot live without insulin. Simple as that. So if they check your C-peptide and that's close to nothing, uh, and if they, if you have antibodies, uh, which some of you may know, but I'm not going to go into detail about this, your doctors can check that. Beta cell antibodies, typically they are. Then your typical type 1. Now, not every type 1 has antibodies. Unfortunately, it's because of the tests are not great, doesn't always catch the antibodies, but sometimes antibodies disappear uh, after a while, so that is another reason that you may not have uh, antibodies. But if, you're, if your C-peptide is low at a young age, uh, you basically lost all your beta cells that produce insulin. I mean, you can't always get a pancreatic transplant, which is not the easiest thing to do. There are islet cell transplants in certain cases, but these are right now at least on selected cases. Not every type 1 diabetic can get those treatments, unfortunately. Now, when it comes to type 2, we don't necessarily check C-peptide to diagnose someone with type 2 because if you are not on insulin or you don't require insulin to survive, then you don't have type 1. I know that. So why do I have to run a test, right? And then I don't run antibody testing on every type 2 because, again, there's some people that I can tell if they're not losing weight, if somebody's not losing weight, they're on metformin, you know, they are on a few pills and their A1C is slightly high, that can easily be remedied. I, I'm not going to question that. Now, but one thing that I question, though, is type 1 and a half diabetes. And a lot of people are not aware of that. Now, we're going to talk about that now, but before, well, I would say the last but not least, I will also talk about Morty. Morty is a type of diabetes that most of you have never heard of it unless you read my book right there. But I'm going to have a brief touch on that Morty as well because Morty is the most commonly misdiagnosed type of diabetes as well as type 1 and a half. But there is more awareness now around the type 1 and a half. Now, why do they call it type 1 and a half? Because, or some people call it type 3. But the reason is, it doesn't really look like type 1, but it's not really type 2. So we call it type 1.5. Simple as that. It's no brainer. Here's an example. Somebody comes age 40. You know, they may be overweight a little bit, but they're not necessarily that overweight. And they are telling me that they tried metformin, they tried this, they tried that. Things are not really working, especially they stopped working very quickly. And now, no matter what they do, their blood sugars remain high. I'm like, hmm, maybe you are not really making insulin anymore, especially if they are losing weight at that stage. So what happens is those people have antibodies in their system, but uh, those antibodies are not as aggressive and they their beta cells do not die at an early age like type 1 diabetics do. So they typically end up developing diabetes later in life, typically in their 30s or early 40s. Again, there is no like 
stereotyping here i mean it can happen i have seen type 1 diabetes at age 85 i have seen type 2 diabetes at age 8 but i'm just telling you what is typical here and um, you know these people are typically like they don't look like a typical type 2 they didn't need insulin right away so they're not typical type 1 but they end up requiring insulin within the first 5 to 10 years of diagnosis of diabetes and they are not typically uh, super overweight individuals and they generally get diagnosed early age and they don't necessarily have to have a strong history of type 2 diabetes in their family again type 2 diabetes uh, is a is strongly genetically inherited disease 60 percent of diabetes uh, is inherited and 40 percent is environmentally acquired so uh, sometimes no matter what you do uh, if it's in your genes it may happen to you but when you control your environment you can definitely push that envelope and you know delay the process for a longer time and have a healthier life longer like i have diabetes in my family but i'm not depressed about it you know uh, i'm just trying my best to not to get it but if i have diabetes at age 55 I'm not going to go depressed about it. You know, if it's in my genes, it's in my genes. Uh, you know what I mean? Instead of getting diabetes at age 45, I can push it 55 to 60 and have another 15, 20 years of, you know, disease-free life uh, by eating healthy and exercising. Why not, right? But, like, some people believe that diabetes is just eating bad. Nah, that's not true. Eating bad is part of it, but, uh, like I said, genetics are a huge part of it. Now, back to type 1, I have, uh, like I said, if you are a younger individual, you don't have a strong family of type 2 in your family, you're not necessarily uh, eating bad, and, you know, you're not overweight, we check antibodies, uh, we sometimes check C-peptide for those people to just clarify some clouds and see what we can do for those people. And we discussed, like, a type 2 is typically strong genetic background, da-da-da-da-da, you all know that right now. So, now what about Modi? Modi is interesting. We uh, suspect Modi, especially if people develop that at a very, very young age, uh, like in teenager years and so forth, they, they get checked in a routine blood test. They don't end up with uh, in the hospital like a DKA or anything like that. Their blood sugar never goes super high or, uh, you know, they don't necessarily require insulin for most types of Modi. Modi 2 and Modi 3 is the most common ones. Uh, the other ones are pretty rare, uh, but there's like, uh, God knows, like eight type of, types of Modi. So, but Modi is an exactly a genetic disease. It's not type 2 diabetes genes, it's a different gene. So every, like for diabetes to happen, a lot of things can go wrong, right? But for specifically for Modi, one single gene, one enzyme can go wrong. Uh, like glucokinase can go wrong. And in that case, you develop a diabetes and you may have only a limited disease, like your blood sugar may go only to like 140, 150. Doctors will call you diabetic, but you don't necessarily need too much of like me medical help and your diabetes is not going to progress because the defect is there. The defect, the enzyme defect is always going to be there. So it's not because of insulin resistance like in type 2 diabetes. It's a totally different pathophysiology. Once you treat that with one single agent, it can fix the problem rest of your life. Or sometimes some Modi types, they don't even require any medication. And they never develop complications because their blood sugars are so mildly high, that's not enough to develop complications from diabetes. So as a result, type of diabetes is very important. And these people are interestingly, you know, you you know, doctors, the good doctors will ask family is reason, right? Hey, you know, is it in your family? Especially if, if they're suspecting this type of problem. And it's interesting to find out that they actually everybody has diabetes in their family. It's not just them, you know, let's say the mother, the mother's mother or, you know, etc. So it, it's kind of a uh, linear inheritance pattern. You can easily figure that out. And then if they do not have the typical antibodies for type 1s, we sometimes send them for a gene analysis for Modi. And that uh, typically uh, turns the results. And these tests are not as expensive anymore. Insurance companies will cover as long as your doctor is ordering the right testing. And you may diagnose that as well. So I hope, guys, that helps you to identify what types of diabetes, what type of diabetes you have. And if you do like this video, please spread the video. Let's give a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.